what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the project Lighthouse ROM and this is based on AOSP of course and based on Android 11. This is the initial build of this ROM and here we have the gapps download option, ROM change log, screenshot, support group etc. I'll put everything below, do not worry again. And this ROM is based on OSS vendor. If you do not know what is OSS vendor, let me tell you, this is simply a custom vendor based ROM, which is not based on UI vendor simply. So you don't actually need any vendor file to flash before flashing this ROM. So you can simply wipe cache, Dalvik system data and vendor, then flash this ROM and flash fcrypt disabler. If your storage is decrypted, then just reboot. No separate vendor is needed to flash this ROM. That's how it is for every OSS vendor based ROM. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about and you don't know how to flash a custom ROM on the Redmi K20 Pro, just click on the card right there again. As this is an initial build, it does not include much features over here, but I'll show you what it includes. This is the latest initial build of the 26th June 2021 and this build does not have too much features, but it has some basic important features. I'll show you everything over here. But first, let me show you the about section or the Android version section. It shows the project Lighthouse logo up top. If you tap on it or keep tapping on it, it doesn't do anything. Android version shows as Android 11 as you are noticing. The security patch is latest of June 5th, 2021 and the device of course shows as Redmi K20 Pro. The Lighthouse version shows as Raft and we have the stock kernel as the Lighthouse GPU++ kernel and there is a build number. If you go into the system panel, if you go into advanced, we still have the system updater even though this is an initial build. So that is cool. Maybe it will work and I'm not really sure but yes whenever you are updating from this I will recommend you flashing without wiping anything you can just flash the latest update if you are on the same ROM that will make sure that you are updating the ROM no need to worry about losing your data and here let me show you we have the gestures too and in the like swipe to take screenshot as you are noticing this is the swipe to take screenshot that is there we have the share edit and delete option over here for the swipe to take screenshot let me go back we have also the power menu options and here we do have the advanced restart so let me show you how the power menu looks like this is how it looks like and we do have the like smart home controls of google as you are noticing the smart home controls are working fine and we also have the advanced settings from here you can directly reboot to recovery or fast boot from right here or you can just reboot the system ui let me go back we have the prevent ringing option then we have the system navigation gestures if you go into the settings of it, we have the gesture bar length as well as the gesture bar radius customization. And if I customize it, as you can see, the pill bar right now has changed quite a lot and right now it's quite thick. So yeah, you can customize the pill bar over here if you want to. Let me scroll down. We have the edge music gestures over here. So you can enable it, I guess. And we have the haptic feedback too while going back and stuff. Dead zone, you can customize left edge, right edge, you can customize. Now there is also two button and three button navigations as well. Let me go back, we have the quickly open camera too, so if you double press the power button, that will open the camera quickly. And here we have a couple more interesting features. Really sorry for the background noise guys, there is some constructions going on. In the custom display settings, we have the DC dimming mode, and the DC dimming is actually working over here, but if you turn on DC dimming, the night light breaks up a little bit, like right now. Let me actually explain what happens. So right now, as you can see, I have DC dimming turned on. If I enable night light, yes, the night light is working now. But if I try to adjust the brightness, as you can see right now, the night light got disabled. So that's how it is. I mean, it's turned on, but it's actually not working. If I turn it off, the display turns yellow for a second, then goes back to normal. So yeah, this is what happens in OSS vendor based ROMs, but that's totally normal. And we have the high brightness mode too. So if you enable that, as you can see, the brightness of the screen just goes too bright over here, almost like 1200, 1300 nits, I guess. So yeah, this is very cool if you're using the device outdoors, but definitely it will drain a lot of battery if you're using it like all the time. So that's how it is. And we have the thermal profiles over here. So you can set per apps thermal profiles from this system settings. You can set benchmarks or like browser camera, whatever you need. So you can set those from here. This particular settings of thermal profiles usually stays in battery settings. So if you can't find it in battery settings here, it is there in the system settings to keep that in mind. And here we have the front camera settings. We have the front camera raise dialog, camera LED disabling option. Then we have the front camera sound effects and these are the sound effects that you get. Also, we do have the camera calibration option. So if your front camera is not popping out or something, or if it's stuck, you can calibrate it easily from this option. That is just great. 
and we have the Gboard as the default keyboard as the ROM includes the G apps. Now let me quickly show you the home screen. This is how it looks like. This is the default wallpaper, I guess. To the left of the home screen, we do have the Google's discover page. Widgets are working fine. And if you swipe down, as you can see, you get the quick settings or the notification panel. If you swipe up, you get the app drawer simply. And you can search for any particular app just like this. So this works fine. And scrolling between this home screen, I see a, just a tad bit amount of like sluggishness over here. But maybe my device was like in standby for a long time. So yeah, I did not use it for a long time. Maybe that's why it's appearing. Maybe it will be fixed with like a little bit of more usage or with just a reboot. Maybe I was looking at Redmi Note 10 Pro's 120Hz display all along. So that's why maybe it's feeling a little bit sluggish, but yeah. But if you go into the settings of the stock launcher, let me show you, this is a custom launcher and it simply says custom launcher just notice over here so that's how it is this is a custom launcher present over here this is how the recent panel looks like again we have the screenshot share option and if you tap here we have the app info split screen pin app and the freeform option and here we have the show google app and stuff like that it doesn't show you any other features but it does have the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen as you can see the double tap to sleep actually worked fine yes always on display 2 is there but i disabled it that's why it did not appear let me actually try to enable it from the settings or something so let's just enable this always show time and info let me just show you double tap anywhere in the home screen again and as you are noticing the always on display is working fine and if i tap the fingerprint scanner as you can see it unlocks from the always on display if i do it from the lock screen too as you are noticing the unlocking speed with the fingerprint scanner is not a problem over here but sometimes i have seen as you can see it does not work so you just have to double tap or something right now it is working let me show you a couple more times so yeah right now as you can see it's just not working so this happens in this ROM, but again, this is an initial build. It might be fixed with the future updates. And sometimes if I double tap, okay, it's not happening right now. As you can see, the fingerprint scanner icon is just not showing up right now. As you can see again, it's not showing up. So for that, if you swipe up, it gets you to the fingerprint scanner. And right now, if I tap the fingerprint scanner, then only it unlocks. So this problem is there. This is a known bug. That's why I just disabled the like always on display. If you disable the always on display, these bugs just do not appear over here. So that's how it is. Talking about the quick settings panel, this is how it looks like. You can edit and add multiple toggles over here. But yes, again, initial build, not a lot of options are there. But there are plenty of options that you would need. Here we have the nightlight and stuff, of course, that is working fine. But if you turn on DC dimming, that might be a little bit broken. But yeah, battery server is there. And if you go and tap and hold on this, you can get the battery settings and stuff like that, of course. Dark theme is there and the start screen recording option is there. This is the stock Android 11 screen recorder. With that, you can record the device audio and the microphone audio at the same time. That is working fine. And we have the hotspot, do not disturb, etc. Data server is there, DC dimming and the like moto audio is also there. I'll show you that. And we also have the high brightness toggle too that you can add. So talking about moto audio, this is the moto audio that is present over here. So you can actually go to custom and edit the custom over here. You can actually manually like change everything over here for your headsets or loudspeakers or your Bluetooth headphones and stuff like that. So you can tap on vocal boost, bass boost, everything. So this is great that we get the Moto Audio over here present by default. That is amazing that you can tweak the sound however you want it for each of your headsets or speakers. So that is great. Now talking about the stock camera, this is the stock camera that is present over here. Let me go into the settings. And if I go into the info, as you can see, this is the Gcam 7.3 by Burial and we have the version 16 over here. Let me go back. This camera is working super fine and we have the wide angle lens and the telephoto lens, like three of the lenses are working totally fine. No issues. Also, the night sight should be working fine. Portrait mode pictures and stuff should be working fine too. And for the front camera and stuff, yes, everything is working fine. Let's actually take a front camera selfie with this kind of thing turned on. That is the face retouching option. So seems like, nope, the face retouching is actually not working as you can see. So yeah, that is how it is. But yes, the Gcam is present by default over here. Yes, the Gcam does take good quality photos. But if you want to, you can install ANX camera over here. And for that, you need to flash magic. You can watch that guide from the card right there on the top right to see the ANX camera version 185R flashing guide on the Redmi K20 Pro. Jumping into the settings panel. Now, this is how it looks like. We have the battery settings over here. At first, I'll show you here. If you tap on this battery logo, we have the full battery usage over here. This can definitely give you six to seven hours of screen on time without any issues. The battery server is there. The battery manager is there. Battery percentage is there. Smart charging is also there. Last full charge shows up over here. And we have the screen on time. That's it. We do not get any battery temperature stuff or the battery charging cycle and stuff like that. Those things are simply missing from here. 
but the 18 watt fast charging should be working fine here and the battery life again will be 6 to 7 hours of screen on time. Now let me jump into the display settings. This is how it looks like. We have the brightness level, the dark theme and talking about dark theme as you can see this is completely black and it's not like some kind of grayish black. So yeah, the dark theme is completely like AMOLED black over here. No issues with that if you're wondering about that. And nightlight is there, adaptive or auto brightness is there. In the styles and wallpapers, let me show you. We have this on device wallpaper. That's the default wallpaper over here. And also we have this to come alive wallpapers. And there is the living universe, but it just like closes up over here. In the grid option, we have up to six by seven grid as you are noticing. And in the clock option, we have these many lock screen clocks. We do have the S funny one, then the colored Samsung and the ID option. These are the lock screen clocks that you get. You can set any kind of like lock screen clock that you want to. Yes, the options are not too much, but yes, some options are there. Screen timeout is there, auto red screen is there. Then we have the color set to boosted. If you scroll down, we have the DPI changing option. Then we have the lock screen over here. We have the show lockdown option and stuff like that. Then the always show time and info that is the always on display. Ambient wake gestures options are there. Let me go back. We have the double tap to wake and the enable blurs option. Yes, I do have the enable blurs option, but right now the blurs are not appearing because I did not reboot the device. I need to reboot the device once. So right now, as you can see, the background blur did appear as you are noticing. So yeah, the blur right now is working fine after a complete reboot. So that was all the display settings that are there and we have the sound settings now and here in the sound settings we have the media call etc volume and by the way this is how the volume panel looks like as you can see and you can expand it just like this and if you scroll down we have the phone ringtone and stuff like that of course dial pad tone screen locking sound charging sound charging vibration etc all of those you can disable or enable audio direct is also there and with that you can set to youth edition and you can use it of course and we have the hi-fi audio option and also we have the sound preset as well as again we have the moto audio over here if you want to customize your sound quality further let me go back and here if you scroll down we have the security options here we have the fingerprint scanner and now let me show you in the settings we have only lock after screen timeout then the power button instantly locks and the screen of fingerprint and that's pretty much it we simply do not get any kind of fingerprint scanner icons or the fingerprint scanner animations over here. Even if I go into the fingerprint scanner settings, as you are noticing, it only shows these two fingerprints. So that's how it is. As you can see, no fingerprint scanner animation or something. It just glows white and then unlocks. Very simplistic or minimalistic in my opinion. Now let's just set up the face unlock and let me show you if it is working fine. Let's just put the device towards my face. So setting a face unlock is done. Right now let's just double tap anywhere in the home screen. And yeah, right now let's just double tap to wake. So I think I have to swipe up for getting the face unlock to work. Yeah. So you need to swipe up to get the face unlock working. Let me show you one more time. As you can see face unlock is working, but yes, after double tapping to wake, you have to swipe up to get the face unlock working. Talking about the app lock, yes, you can lock any particular app just by tapping on these locked icons from here. And this is how you can lock any particular app and there are notifications from here. And we have authenticate only once. Then you can search for any particular app over here. But I'm not really sure if that bug is there where you just tap on the notification and it opens that particular app. Let me actually see if that bug is still there. I'll enable this authenticate only once. I have to lock the device once, I guess. So I did enable this authenticate only once feature. So right now, if I open that app, as you can see, it shows me that the app is locked. But from the recent panel, if I try to go in, okay, so it still shows me that that particular app is locked. So maybe that bug is not there. And here, as you can see, it unlocks. So that means the app lock is not buggy and tapping on their notification will not unlock that particular app. You don't need to worry about that. Now let's talk about customizations. In this lighthouse supplies, we have all the customizations as of right now. And if you tap on it, as you can see, we have the status bar, quick setting, gesture, lock screen, notification, and the misc settings. First, let's go into the status bar. We only have this network traffic indicator. Again, this is an initial build, so don't expect too much customizations as of now. Maybe they will be added in the future updates. In the quick settings, we have the rows and column number customization. Then we have the show tile titles and the tint quick setting using accent color. You can disable it if you want to. And with that, this is how it will look. And the data usage in quick setting header is there. You can have it on daily usage, monthly usage, or have it disabled. Let me go back and we have the gesture settings. Here we have the screen of power and toggle torch. Yes, that is working fine. Double tap to sleep in the status bar is there. As you can see, it is working flawlessly. No issues with that. In the lock screen, we do have the lock screen charging info. Then we have the media cover art. 
then you have the cover art filter and we have the blur level for that then we also have the notification customization we have the vibrate on connect call waiting and disconnect so in call vibrations are there and for decalling should be working fine here i don't have a sim card in the device right now so i can't show you that in the miscellaneous settings we have the wake up on charge disabling option then the show app volume is there now let me actually show you if the app volume is actually working so as you can see the app volume is actually working no issues with that and i do I have this media volume like lower down that's why there is no sound but yeah the app volume does appear over here if you expand it just like this as you are noticing and the safety net passes right out of the box here so you should not worry about banking apps on this particular rom so right out of the box you can use google pay or any other banking apps that you want to i have broken my drm certification way back in the past so that's why it shows l3 for me but if you have L1, you should not worry about latest OSS window based ROMs. Yes, the latest OSS window based ROMs will not break your DRM certification. You should not worry about that. It will stay L1 if it's L1 for you right now. Okay, Google. As you can see, the Google Assistant is working now. No issues whatsoever after doing that setup kind of process. So right now, let's just do one thing. Let's open all the apps from memory that I have opened already. As you can see, I have a couple of apps opened over here on memory. So first, let's open Chrome. As you can see, Chrome is in memory, Facebook still in memory, Twitter still in memory. So as this is a USB based ROM, I would say, yes, the performance over here should be really good. As you can see, all the apps are staying in memory, no issues whatsoever with the memory management. So the RAM management over here is one of the best that you will get. So there is no issues with the RAM management over here. As you can see, all the apps are staying in memory and you can switch between them just like this, as you can see. And yeah, all the apps are staying in memory, no issues whatsoever that I have had with the RAM management. And here are the n 2 Geekbench score of this particular ROM. If you are worried about the performance, so I feel this is a really great custom ROM for the Redmi K20 Pro and definitely it focuses on performance and the battery life should be good. It does not have too much bloatware at all. So yeah, the experience over here is very stock Android-ish and the whole UI stays very, very smooth. No issues whatsoever that I have had on this lighthouse project rom if you ask me personally yes i have definitely liked it but it does lack some features like the brightness control feature by sliding a finger on the status bar then we can't simply use the force fingerprint option over here there is no option for like that as of right now so those things are definitely missing but it does have the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen on the stock launcher so that will depend what you like and what you don't so please share this video if, with your friends if you want them to know about this project lighthouse rom on the redmi k20 pro and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you have not yet this is tito from kdn tech signing off for today and i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye bye now